here guys, we're at DragonCon 2014 where everything that is anything is here. We're talking, we're talking science fiction, we're mm -hmm. talking fantasy, we're talking horror, we're talking science, we're talking technology, we're talking what's the future of all of these things. And I have the distinct pleasure of speaking with an expert on a field of technology that I'm really interested in, and you should be too, Dr. Padfield. Dr. Padfield, thank you so much. My pleasure. Now, Dr. Padfield is an expert on biometrics, and my first question to you, doctor, what is that? Biometrics is the science of identifying people through some physical measurement. If we think about access control and how I get into something, Everyone knows that we started off with keys, they go back centuries. Then we went from keys to passwords. Well, biometrics is the next step in access control. It's no longer what I have or what I know, it's who I am. And so some characteristic about me is, has become my key. There's many different types of biometrics, but it, it all comes back to I'm measuring something about an individual. It can be a physical characteristic, such as a fingerprint, or it could be something that's a learned behavior, such as keystroke dynamics. The way that I type on a keyboard and the way that you type on a keyboard is slightly different, almost like a fingerprint. And there are pieces of software available that can distinguish me versus you if we're typing. That's fascinating. So let me know, what are some of the current uses of biometrics? I mean, obviously something like uh, entry into a secure building, perhaps. Mm -hmm. This would be kind of leading into the stuff we, we've seen in science fiction films and spy films, the whole the, the cornea scan. But that's actually not that far off from what's really happening today, right? Well, there's two main areas of biometrics, and a lot of people confuse these two. There's biometric identification and there's biometric verification. The verification is simpler, I'll start with that one. Biometric verification is where I have registered myself in some electronic format, such as an iPhone. The iPhone 5S has a fingerprint sensor on it. If you purchase one, you have to put your finger on it several times, and what you're doing is you're registering your fingerprint into the phone. What the phone is doing, it's taking a live image of the fingerprint, it's comparing it against the one record that's in the phone and says, is this the person who they claim to be? So if you pick up my phone, you put your fingerprint on it, it's going to look at it and say, this live image of what I'm scanning right now does not match what is in my record, I'm not gonna let you into the phone. So that's biometric verification. The other thing is biometric identification, and this is where police recover a fingerprint from a crime scene, they have no idea who it belongs to, so rather than doing a one-to-one -one match, does this belong to jo John Smith? They're taking this fingerprint and they're comparing it against millions of records trying to find the one that matches. So what would you consider to be sort of the, the leading edge of biometrics? What are the edges of the field right now doing? Probably the most interesting area where there's the most work going on is in facial recognition. And we've had simple facial recognition around for a long time. You can go back several years and find video cameras that have little boxes that it will find a face and then it will focus on that face. They're not foolproof. I've had my camera out before in the woods and it picked up on a tree because of the way that the knots were in the tree. It, you know, dark spot, dark spot, kind of aligned. It, it thought that was a face. Well, that's the really, really simple version. The uh, biometric facial recognition, that's kind of the cutting edge stuff right now. Now, there's a lot of bad information, a lot of uh, uh, misconceptions out there about biometrics right now. Most people, what they know of biometrics comes from CSI, uh, person of interest or one of the other uh, popular TV shows and they are pushing beyond what the technology is capable of today. One of the big issues with facial recognition, it's a, it's a great technology, but if my photograph of you is head on, but I'm trying to compare that against a match from a security camera that's mounted up in the top of the room, the angles are wrong, usually the lighting is wrong, you're going to have uh, dark circles under your eyes because of overhead lighting versus the camera that took your uh, picture straight on. It's not an impossible challenge to overcome, but it is very, very difficult. Uh, not every camera that you see in a hotel or in a, a shopping center is being fed back to the NSA. Uh, they might want that sometime, but uh, that's not the case today. Right, and the, the way that cameras take images, if it's a, a fairly simple camera, it's really looking at it as almost like it's a flat image. I've seen some early biometric systems that did facial recognition that could be fooled by a picture of mm -hmm. a face as opposed to someone's actual face. 
because it wasn't quite sophisticated enough at that point. We're getting better with that with the various types of cameras that can use infrared sensors to kind of help sense depth. But in general, I've seen that be one of the, the challenges facing biometrics. That is definitely the case. Amazon has a phone out now that actually has four front-facing cameras on it. If they chose to go with biometrics, that one would be extremely difficult to fool because you're getting four distinct camera angles. But anytime I'm using a single lens on a camera, it's going to be very difficult because it can't get that three dimensions. And so if I just have a single camera, that's going to be relatively easy to fool with a, a flat image versus a three-dimensional image. Are there any other misconceptions about biometrics that you tend to run into? Things that people just commonly assume are happening? I mean, I know that the closed-circuit television cameras, that's a big example. Obviously in places like the United Kingdom, where they're even more prevalent, there seems to be this perception of perpetuated by shows like Sherlock, mm -hmm. where someone just has magical access to every <laughs> single device in the city of London that automatically identifies everyone. But that, that seems to be a little far-fetched. And that's one of my favorite shows. I love watching uh, what they do with the show, but uh, the technology is just not there today for that type of thing. Uh, certainly there's government organizations that uh, are tasked with national security that uh, are moving in that direction. but. What you're seeing on television is well beyond what, uh, what actually exists today. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of fear about this technology. Technology, by its very nature, is neutral. Whether you're talking about a firearm, whether you're talking about nuclear power, uh, cameras with uh, incredible long distance range, technology is neutral, it's just a tool. It's what's being done with the technology that can be good or bad. There's a lot of people that are afraid of this technology, but it's here to stay, it's not going away. I had a very interesting conversation with a friend of mine who's a police chief up in Indiana. He was telling me about body-worn cameras that uh, his department is trying out. They have uh, hooked up with a potential supplier who has given them some uh, units for trial. And these are cameras that, uh, they're not Google Glass, but they are similar in a way that they have the camera built into the uh, sunglasses. He said this is a, a, such a great tool because they're right on the brink. It's not quite there yet, but where they're going with this is an officer pulls someone over and as they're walking up to the window, the camera can do facial recognition on the driver and the officer could get a message pop up in his glasses that says this person's wanted for whatever. And uh, he just thought the technology was incredible and I said, well, technology cuts both ways. What's going to happen someday when one of your officers goes into a crack house undercover and they're wearing a pair of glasses that says undercover cop? Mm -hmm. um, and I'm sure that organized crime is working on something like that. The, the technology is neutral. It all comes down to what are you doing with it. So really the message there is that we really need to be responsible human beings Absolutely. to make sure that the tools we make are used the way we intended them to be used. Once the genie's out of the bottle, it's out. Right. Um, you know, we see the same thing with drones going on. There are legitimate uses for drones. There are illegitimate uses for drones. But once the technology is available, it's been perfected, it's hard to keep technology out of the wrong hands.